Hey guys, this is Dr. Jadvi. Welcome back to our favorite dog Shara. And this, in this uh, case-based scenario series, we are going to see about sodium hypochlorite accident from the subject endodontics. So, what is sodium hypochlorite used for in endodontics? So, let's see first. So, sodium hypochlorite, as you know, it is NaOCl. It is a common irrigation solution which is used in root canal treatment so it is used as an irrigation solution so what it has it has strong antibacterial and tissue dissolving properties because of these properties only it is used as a irrigation solution in the rct okay so it has some serious complications some of which are life-threatening so it is the most effective inexpensive and readily available chemical so it is considered to be the optimal irrigant for use throughout instrumentation because it processes potent antimicrobial and proteolytic activity so it is used to remove the debris and smear layer that forms on instrumented dentin surfaces so in addition it also acts as a lubricant it is antibacterial it has tissue dissolving property it has proteolytic activity it removes debris and smear layer of dentin and along with that it also acts as a lubricant so with a ph of 11 to 13 it causes injury primarily by oxidation of proteins and it can dissolve necrotic and vital pulp tissue killing a broad range of pathogens okay so this is a brief about sodium hypochlorite okay this will be useful for you in from the uh, view of uh, dental materials right okay so what is sodium hypochlorite accident so when there is inadvertent injection of any OCL beyond the apical foramen, beyond apical foramen, if we are injecting the sodium hypochlorite solution, then occurs what we call as sodium hypochlorite accident. So the complication occurs in teeth with wide apical foramen. So when it is wide then only there is chance for the sodium hypochlorite to move beyond the apex or when the apical constriction is destroyed during the root canal preparation. As we all know, we have a major apical constriction and a minor apical constriction in the root to, uh, while performing the root canal, right? So, the, we keep in mind that when we are preparing the canal for the irrigation, we go till the constriction only we don't go beyond it right we stop our preparation till the construction till the apical constriction right so when when accidentally we are destroying this apical constriction then the sodium hypochlorite can come out of the canal and go into the surrounding tissues causing accident so extreme pressure during irrigation may result in contact of large volumes of the irrigant with the apical tissues if this occurs the excellent tissue dissolving cap capability of uh, sodium chloride will lead to necrosis so alternatively other tools such as passive ultrasonic irrigation can be used which with better outcome in removing debris and less apical extrusion so this is another kind of technique which we use so passive ultrasonic irrigation okay so the sequence of signs and symptoms that occur after extrusion into the periapical tissue seems to follow a typical pattern so they have a typical pattern so according to Hulsman's criteria according to Hulman's criteria so this is important the diagnosis of any OCL accident can include acute pain swelling and redness bruising progressive swelling involving the infraorbital area or mouth angle depending on the site of any OCL injection infraorbital area when we are involving maxillary anteriors and mouth angle depending upon the uh, it uh, can happen in uh, mandibular posterior teeth and sometimes these will uh, sometimes in maxillary uh, during maxillary posterior teeth also actually back maxillary posterior teeth most commonly qualify for uh, intraorbital area only so profuse hemorrhage often manifesting intraorally from the orifice of the tube tooth numbness or weakness of the facial nerve and secondary infection sinusitis and cellulitis are the other major complications so as you can see in this image so this is the anatomical uh, site 
where the sodium hypochlorite accident so here you can observe infra orbital area being affected and the corner of mouth being affected that is angle of the angle being affected so so here you can see these are the areas which are affected due to the sodium hypochlorite accident so this is a person and uh, this is a tooth so as you can see here the apical foramen is not proper and the solution irrigant has gone beyond the apical foramen right so the proper management of nao cl accident is important to achieve the best outcome so the how do we do this proper management so there are no recognized guidelines for the treatment but the main goal of treatment is to eradicate the solution once we eradicate the solution half of our problem is solved there and to prevent secondary damage with conservative management so early recognition of signs and symptoms is very important in order to eradicate the solution at proper time so pain edema and redness are the first signs of nevocl accident so this is very important so among rubber so among this rubber is very important like pain edema and redness okay then that is rubber color dollar are important in nevocl accident time is a crucial factor in reducing the destructive effect of and you seal and using other tools for irrigation such as we have seen pya may reduce such risk of then coming to the treatment treatment should point at the principles of reducing the swelling and controlling pain and preventing secondary infection as we have seen immediate irrigation with normal saline is a key step to reduce tissue damage so tissue contact with sodium hypochlorite should be minimized by allowing the solution and exudates to filter out through the root canal orifices local and oral analgesics may help to alleviate the pain for pain local and oral analgesics immediately we need to irrigate with the normal saline and tissue contact should be minimized okay and we should allow the filtrate to come out through the root canal orifices and local and oral analgesics can be used for to manage the pain external compression along with cold packs on the affected area is advised to relieve the discomfort and reduce edema after about 6 hours cold packs must be replaced with warm compresses for several days okay steroid may be used to minimize edema antibiotics needed to prevent secondary infection in more serious cases referral to a medical center or furthermore surgical intervention may be necessary but most of most of the time by we can manage with antibiotics and steroids only there are rare cases where which happen which become more serious okay so what what can we do for prevention so prevention can be done by taking proper radiographic imaging prior to any root canal treatment so with proper radiographic treatment, uh, imaging what we can identify the precise evaluation of the length of the root canal so when we are sure about the length of the root canal then we will only go to till the depth we require we do not go beyond that so that will minimize half of the risk right so the patient and the treating dentist should protect their eyes clothes effectively okay and a rubber dam should be used to prevent any leakage or contact of the solution to the soft tissue other preventive measures include placing the irrigation needle 1 to 3 mm short of the working length that we do that is a main thing we learn during biomechanical preparation right permitting free movement of the needle within the canal and using low constant pressure while injecting the solution use lower lock needles with side port delivery can also prevent any OCL accident okay then coming to the clinical scenario so this is a big one okay so a 54 year old woman reported at the endodontic clinic for an emergency appointment she had swelling on the right side of her face which apparently extends to the right submandibular and sublingual regions on the affected side 
so she had bluish red bruises all over the swelling difficulty in opening her right eye and limited mouth opening but no paresthesia she informs the dentist that she was root canal treated 3 days back by the neighborhood gp gp is nothing but general practitioner and that she had severe pain even as she was uh, getting anesthetized anesthetized by the gp pain has not subsided ever since despite taking painkillers the endodontist reassured her and suggested antibiotics and warm compresses and oral rinses in addition to the painkiller she was advised to come for review after 3 days the most likely diagnosis for this patient is so i have already underlined all the uh, main points which you need to look while solving this question so first of all right side is affected right eye is affected uh right side submandibular sublingual spaces are affected and there are bluish red bruises okay so this is this itself uh, suggests that something has happened to the tooth over there so and she is reporting with a root canal treatment done just 3 days prior to the visit so the for so we can easily say that the culprit is the tooth itself so since it was uh, filled with the sodium hypochlorite we can easily come to the answer that it is a sodium hypochlorite accident okay so if you like our video do subscribe to our youtube channel you can also follow us on our instagram handles at docshala for dental content and at docshala medical for medical content you can also follow us on telegram thank you